Hello everyone, I'd like to talk about JPPM, uh, remote clients. Normally I've seen other people um, create uh, a JavaFX type of application that can run your model, but you'd have to create one for every model there. Uh, but why isn't there a web uh, version of running a model uh, remotely through JPPM? Well, I'd like to show you today how that's possible. Normally, in the, when you log into KIE Workbench, you would start your model, and you would fill out the candidate name, hit submit, and you'd run it. But here I have logged in using single sign-on with this web application, and I've also uh, included the SVG file here where um, I can pan it with the mouse, I can zoom it, And uh, do all sorts of things like that. So what I can do here too is this is a deploy process. So I can start it from here. So I click this. It remotes into JPPM, and it displays the same information that you would to start the process there. So. Can do that here and start the process. Process ID 8 has started. So now we can move to running processes, select it, and it shows here that we're at this step right now. So I can see the variables that have already been entered. Salavoy is the initiator and John Smith is the name. So I can process this task by selecting this link. So I select the link, it communicates to JPPM through an iframe, single sign-on, we hit start, task 17 has been started, we can then enter the information in here, and then we can select something there and we can complete the task. So we can do all the tasks remotely. As you can see, the variables as I've entered them in are starting to show up on the right hand side here. So I can process the next task. So I hit that. As you can see, I can now press start. I can then Enter some information in here, just as you were in JPPM. Okay, complete the task. One of the things that also you'll notice here is that as I do the tasks, you can see the progress update on the SVG file. So as soon as I um, press start here, okay, and then I'm going to select this and it kind of makes it go away, but you can see here there's this owner Salaboy behind the window there. So the model is updating as we're uh, processing it. So now I can just put something in here, delete it, and it moves on to the next one. So I would like to sort of talk about how this, uh, how to do this. So one way. Um, to do the uh, to create the SVG file, you have a file in your uh, JPPM under this direct under this path profiles, and in here you have a store on S store SVG on save. This would be normally uh, false. You put this to true, so that now in JPPM when you save a model it automatically generates an SVG file. 
my application was um, designed with GWT GXT. So normally when you um, run your application, it's run with this workflow viewer minus in my web XML file. But for single sign-on, you have to have a little bit different. You have to have all this stuff in here. Okay, so then you might ask yourself, how does the um, username and the roles get passed to my client? This is done through uh, a JSP page. So that when the person logs in, the username and the roles are written into the HTML, and your client then reads its HTML to see what uh, roles and stuff you have. So when I'm looking at this here, if I hit the F12 button, I should be able to go in, say, uh, somewhere in here um, and look at the HTML Let's see there. So. I'm not really sure how this... okay I'm look at the head here and there is my user Names and my roles are all written out here. So you can see that um, there's the metadata there. And you can see I have a user, admin, and an analyst. So that's how I know what my, and I'm also, I'm a salad boy down here. So that's how you know. Okay. So let's go back to this. Okay. So that's how it, you get your username and your roles. So one of the things I use too is uh, I use a library to do uh, my SVG manipulation by panning and my zooming. So I use this Vectomatic library that I use as a, as a dependency in my palm. When you get a SVG file from JPPM that's auto-generated, it doesn't have a Viewbox element. Well, the viewbox element is critical to this whole thing because you need that. So you have to add it in yourself. The viewbox element has an X and a Y and a width and a height. One of the important uh, methods that you're going to use is this matrix transform that you use for zooming in and zooming out. And that's how it uh, figures out based on the, the screen and the width and the where the mouse is and all that, how it's going to zoom in and zoom out. So you're just going to be modifying this view box. That's all you're going to be modifying to zoom in and zoom out. When you zoom in here and zoom out, all you're doing is modifying the view box. So, okay. Um, another thing is to get the SVG file, you have to make a REST call. That REST call basically looks like this. Um, also, um, you're going to have to create your own process definitions, resource info, and build JPPM and add this as a REST call because it doesn't, JPPM does not provide uh, process definitions in the 6.2. So you would call, add this process definition and you would be calling it like REST process definitions. And when you got the JSON back, it would have an encoded process source element, which is the BPMN source that you're going to need when you parse the BPMN so that you can update the HTML that I'm doing on top of the SVG file. So what what you're seeing here is an SVG file with HTML on top of it. Oh, I add this link. I add this red box. 
I also have a feature here where I can change this red box to say a blue box and then I can uh, have this be whatever I want so I can control it Okay, to learn how to do more of this um, remoting in, there is a uh, Pfefferman WordPress.com website, which looks like this when you go to it, and he will help you uh, to figure out how you can remote into JPPM. Uh, in my instance, I included two HTML files, which I added into JPPM, and there's already a JavaScript file that's already there to help you uh, remotely log in. You have to set the valve in your server XML file in Tomcat, the single sign-on valve, so that when you're logging in, as I remote into JPM, I'm remoting as the same logged in person in my own application. So here I'm Salaboy, and I have these roles, which I described how I got these um, through the HTML. Um, so let me see if there's anything else I can think of. This is also an example of the process definitions file. So basically your process definitions rest call looks like this. Process definitions and this is all you have to have is this little bit right here to get that in JSON. You're going to use the runtime data service to get your process definitions. And you add this to the remote services area rest area uh, of the drills JPPM integration module okay so um, that's all for now